have been doing this for 10 years. This is our 11th year with Antiques Appraisal Day. It is a huge community effort. We have volunteers who do everything from securing sponsorships, program patrons, and to getting the appraisers who actually donate their time to us for this day. That's Bessie P. Scutman, a famous American woman artist, probably from 1930-ish. She was the first artist to paint children as children instead of little adults. So they looked really like children. This is a very rare one. I've never seen that one. I've not. It's very unusual. What's nice is you have a letter, not just a signature on this one. Right. And they're in remarkably good condition. Oh. You've got Kennedy, Eisenhower. Ink fades faster than almost anything. Oh, okay. This, this must have been a different kind. kind it does look like a different kind okay. of ink. Uh, but this one, you can see it all. It's starting to go. It was, it was definitely a little bit of lack of start. About 400 on Eisenhower. 300, I think, on this Kennedy one. It is faded some. These are not are, are not real signatures. You can see how these two look exactly alike. It's very heavy. It doesn't look like ink. And because of the way they were printed, they're not fading like the real ink is. I've been looking to find somebody to do the appraising, more so for the Bessie P. Scutman picture that I have. Um, and I didn't really know who to go to until I saw the article in the paper. I thought two of the presidential signatures looked like they were real, and I thought the other three were stamps, but um, I just brought them along as like my second piece because each appraisal gets cheaper. Obviously, it uh, has worked well, and we'll expect about 175 people or so going through here today. What they hope to find uh, when they bring in uh, their treasures is uh, perhaps some historical background, uh, a general idea of what it is worth. Uh, we often say this is not a formal appraisal in the sense that they can use it for insurance purposes, but it certainly will give them an idea of what the value of the item they're bringing in uh, probably would bring if they uh, actually sold it. Probably worth, probably closer to twelve hundred dollars. I mean, it's a very good doll. Right. It was made by a good doll company. It was just, you know, it was one that was. There's a lot of attention to detail. There's right. the the individual right. lashes, right. the brows. This is a character doll. In 1910, they started making character dolls. Prior to that, you wouldn't have a baby doll at all. Right. Little girls had lady dolls, they had friend dolls, but they didn't have baby dolls. Dolls didn't have, they had dolly faces and they, they were not very realistic looking. Right. And then in 1910, they started making them look like real children. Real. And that was really, it, it took off like crazy. So in 1910 to, to 1914, character dolls. So this right. doll was probably from that period. Yeah, because I um, say when she died in April, she was 96, and I think she had it since she was like five or six years old. Well, this was made by in Germany by Goebel. Well, I thought it was very interesting. I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I really didn't know what to expect. I was pleasantly surprised. And uh, their knowledge is, is impeccable. <laughs> it really is. This is really a huge group effort. We have board member involvement, volunteer involvement, and there's a whole committee that works on just Antiques Appraisal Day to get this ready. Well, the feedback has been very exciting. People are so interested in hearing, first of all, about the value of their item, but even more importantly, they get a great education about um, the time period from that item, what was the thinking, what was the philosophy, what was the economic times, and how did that influence the item and how it was made, who were some of the role models during that time period which influenced, for example, in doll making. That had a big impact. So it's um, the appraisers do an outstanding job in educating people about what life was like during that time period from their item. I have no idea if it works. I've had it for years and years and years. My grandmother passed away in 98 and I got it from there. Do you have the pendulum, Bob, that gets a little round thing? No. Hooks in there. Somebody's uh, somebody's kind of overcoated the case with something at some point, like maybe some shellac. See where this is kind of drizzled down here? This is not that old. This, this, is, this is more like turn of the century to like maybe 1920. 
Um, Holy crap. That's crazy old. That's crazy old? That's crazy old. Much older than I am. <laughs> These things sold, you know, when they were brand new. Um, around fifteen dollars. Nowadays, um, if you were going to buy this in guaranteed running order, case all cleaned up, bezel, this thing right here, that's actually brass. You know, with that polished and lacquered and everything anchored back in place, you'd wind up paying four, four fifty, something like that. It's an eight-day clock, as I said. Eight days. Eight days. You wind it once a week. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, you, you wind it up today. You don't have to wind it until next Saturday. And, and as I said, four, four hundred, four fifty. Um, that's that's what you would have to spend on one if you bought it out of a pawn shop in this day and age. Like it is, if you were going to sell it. You'd be lucky if you got fifty dollars. I came with no expectations. Again, it's um, a family piece that I've had uh, for quite some time since my grandmother passed away. I believe she got it from her mother. I'm not absolutely positive of that. In today's economy, it's not something that I can have repaired right now, but it's something that I will hang on to most definitely in hopes that one day I can have it repaired to um, its prior. Um, glory, but for now I will keep it and put it back where it was and remember my family. A snuff box, they used to, um, instead of smoking, that they had this snuff that they breathed in, they sucked in with their nose. And most men, a lot of men, did that instead of smoking, they used the snuff. And this is Aaron Burr's <laughs> snuff box. You see, this is uh, Louisa Burr. We have a family, I'm the ninth, well, I'm the eighth generation. We now have nine generations of constant Louises through the family. Every one generation has been had the name Louise, or the old Louise used to be Louisa. Oh, I knew it was valuable because my grandmother told me. It's 1806. He said it was worth the three thousand to four thousand dollars, but uh, if you want the short, you buy it short for more than that. He would show it off more than put it away somewhere and hide it. Oh, it's such a nice item. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit more than that, but when they put it at $4,000, that's pretty good. <laughs> My deceased husband's stepfather got it in 1926 from this Blackfoot Indian chief. In my opinion, the, the photograph is not as um, valuable. As valuable as the autograph. Okay. okay. Or the pictograph. Okay, yes. I heard much more than I expected. I do not plan on selling. I plan on taking it back home and cherishing it a little bit more now. The, the fact that this in the 11th year is uh, speaks for itself. Uh, it's always been very successful. It's grown every year. In fact, this year, in terms of uh, the financial base of it, uh, we will uh, bring in the, the most revenue for this thing, our biggest fundraiser of the year. Uh, we'll bring in the most money uh, of any year in the 11 years. It is something that we hope every year to do better and better and so far in 11 years we have done so with more people more appraisers and more funds raised to support the mission of the historical society this is my mother Dorothy Nelson and she was chosen to um, christen one of the ships at the uh, Baltimore Fairfield shipyard back in 1943 and this is the bottle that was used in the christening of that ship and after she christened it of course the little tug uh, towed it out to uh, go into service in World War II. She was also presented with a watch uh, for doing that. I think the watch is worth about $2,000. I had to give her an estimate. Um, it's pretty much a one of a kind. I'd say about $1,200. I, I referred her to the Baltimore Maritime Museum or the Maryland Historical Society. I think they would love to have this in their collection. It, it's a one of a kind. It's very special to Baltimore. 
the, the support of it in the community and uh, the support uh, of the people who just literally want to come and find out something about it, it speaks well for the, for the event. People share their information with each other, strangers become friends, and we sometimes we find the number of people that will join the Historical Society after their experience here today. So even if they um, find out maybe their item wasn't as um, financially valuable, I can tell you they are still tied to that item and feel even more tied to it because of what they've learned about it.